cool. Thank you. Um, thank you, Robert. Um, yeah. So. Um, yeah, my name's Joe. I'm um, I'm one of the uh, one of the customer success managers um, for um, for education at Vivox, and I am um, I'm joined um, by one of our customers, uh, Dr. David Reed from the University of Southampton. Um, now, um, I am neither a learn technologist nor am I a lecturer, so um, you might be asking, uh, what, what, what am I doing here, and why am I, uh, why am I giving this, uh, giving this presentation? Actually, I, um, I have my colleague um, Amy Fletcher, um, who's actually in the audience today, to thank for that. She, um, she gave a, a presentation at um, the uh, conference by the ALT East of England, um, giving a um, giving a, a sort of an insight into um into sort of our response to um uh to, to, to the covid crisis and what it was kind of like from uh, from our side so what i uh, what i thought i'd do was um take a little bit of that and extend it um up up until the sort of present day but what i what i also wanted to do was to bring in um uh yeah bring in um sort of uh, you know a member of our community and one of our one of our customers to sort of share their insights around um uh, you know ar around the community really and the um how uh you know how it was kind of sort of put under strain um you know at, at, at the sort of the beginning and um you know where we are sort of now and looking at um looking at sort of teaching practices um you know then that was kind of brought in in a sort of an emergency fashion and whether they're still sort of fit for purpose um you know going into the uh, going into the future so what uh what what does this sort of year look like um look like for us so um i started drawing out this um started drawing out this timeline and i wanted to um put some dates um in there for when um you know when certain events happened during the year and i very quickly found that uh the whole year seems to have sort of blurred into um into sort of one thing so i really struggled to actually to sort of uh to pinpoint um you know some exact dates when these things happened but i i do remember a, a you know a stage when everything started to um you know sort of close down whether that be sort of workplaces um institutions and um all of that we went into lockdown I, I remember coming back out of it um and now i now i think about um you know the sort of the new term um or the start of this term which has been very different to um you know any any kind of term that i can remember and looking ahead into the future so i've divided my section up into um talking a little bit about um our kind of initial responses um at vivox um you know to, to the sort of crisis that was unfolding how we um you know very quickly went about sort of changing our sort of product roadmap um for the year and uh, you know why we sort of made certain decisions around that and why and why we chose not to do some things um uh for sort of short-term fixes and then talking about um you know going going beyond those emergency measures and what the um what the sort of future might like and that that leads quite nicely um to um yeah to, to to david um who will then um yeah sort of share some of his um share some of his stories and case studies so our initial um what was our initial response so when uh when when the sort of the crisis sort of first uh first happened i i remember just how quiet um the community was i remember being being a customer success manager you know my ev my every day was speaking with learning technologists and lecturers um who are you know using vbox or interested in using vbox and um i i remember the the weeks and weeks um just going by where it was you know virtually impossible um to speak with anyone so for you know for us um as, as a sort of an edtech provider everything that we everything that we do is um you know comes from um you know from comes from our customers and comes from our community so it was very very hard you know just not knowing what was uh what was going on but i do remember um you know sitting down with our um with our md and you know other members of the legion team and um deciding very early on that the main thing that we wanted to do at this time was to be able to help um you know to help people the few people that we could um uh, that we did speak to um 
gave us feedback that actually they felt they were quite um, they were getting inundated with phone calls from um, from edtech providers who um, were potentially offering to solve all of the problems that, are, that they were facing at this time. And, um, you know, we, we, we recognize that, uh, that VBOX isn't going to be able to, um, or isn't able to solve all of those problems, but it was, it was able to help with, um, with some of them. Um, so we really wanted to, uh, you know, really wanted to just help people. So we, we quickly decided that actually, um, if anyone who was uh, using our product for free, um, which has, you know, um, some, limited functionality if they wanted a um if they wanted access to the full functionality um all they had to do was ask us and we would give them an upgrade um no questions asked um and, and we decided that would be until the end of august um and then we'd review it um re review it then um something else that was um you know really concerning in those first um those first sort of two or three weeks was the um the drop off in um drop off in usage um, of, of of our product, so as well as everyone going quiet, um, you know, in terms of trying to make sort of phone calls and emails, um, actually we looked at the usage stats of the product, and they were going um, they were going down as well. So it was it was quite a worrying you know time for us as a um, you know as a company because we 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 thought that you know the, the product that we offer um, you know is you know designed and works in an online you know environment it's you know it's cloud based so our our thinking was that actually usage would probably stay um you know probably stay the same but would would more than likely you know grow um as 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 the world sort of pivoted to online so it was quite worrying during those um those first few weeks luckily I, once those um initial weeks passed um you know we did see that um you know sort of rebound and actually you know i i think our um, usage now is at sort of five times um what it was at the same time last year so one of the things that we had to do sort of after the um uh, after that kind of initial um you know response was have a look at um have a look at our product and have a look at the uh, the roadmap for um you know for development and we were there was a sort of a balancing act that needed to be um needed to be done because we had our product roadmap at that point set in stone um pretty much for the year you know it was all sort of laid out what we were going to be doing that year um and not on there um or at least not in the very short term were things like um integrating with microsoft teams and um and and zoom but it it became quite obvious quite quickly that these were tools that people were going to be using um and yeah th that they would want to be using vbox um you know within them so we 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 made a decision that actually we would sort of rewrite the product roadmap um for the year and look at um look at some of the you know immediate needs that um the people had and what they, that they were asking for and um it, yeah, uh, look at how we can how we can sort of Im improve them. So the main the main ones we're looking at, um, yeah, looking at sort of Teams and Zoom, and then also potentially bringing in, um, uh, yeah, br bringing in sort of webcasting. And then we also decided that we were going to put um, our sort of survey feature um, into our into our free plans um, as well, so to be able to sort of support asynchronous um, asynchronous type activities. So after we'd made all those, um, after we sort of made those um, sort of changes and you know decided what our initial um, you know response was going to be, um, we had to sort of start looking at the future and looking at the uh, uh, you know looking at the start of the new turn and, and what um, what our kind of mantra of sort of valuing every voice was going to mean during this um, during this time. So. Uh, as I'm sure some of you might be aware, um, as, a, as a company, we used to have a um, we used to have another name, and um, we went through a, um, a sort of rebranding exercise um, over over a year ago now, and came up with the name Vvox, and the name comes from um, this idea of valuing every voice. Um, so, what does that mean? Um, uh, you know, what does that sort of mean now? Well, to me, um, it means being being able to kind of contribute and engage um with the uh with the lecture with the class with the meeting uh wherever you are so uh, i i don't know what uh, what sort of teaching next year um looks like but it could very well look like a combination of um face to face and um and uh sort of virtual sessions and maybe a hybrid of a hybrid of both and 
you know what one of the really nice things about you know vivox is that if you are if you're in the room or you are you know watching remotely if you write a if you write a comment you ask a question um you respond to a respond to a vote um your voice is exactly the same your your contribution is exactly the same um particularly when you're running it in an anonymous um you know an anonymous way um supporting live and asynchronous um you know type activities and i, I think sort of david's going to give some examples of um of, of those when, when when he sort of takes over in a second um and then finally sort of thinking about how how introducing kind of engagement um you know through vbox taking away that um you know breaking down that um that moment when you're delivering a um, you know, a session and you're just met with a, you know, a, a series of black screens where people aren't turning their camera on, aren't contributing um, or, you know, and engaging and what, uh, you know, what, what sort of impact that potentially has on, um, you know, sort of students' mental health um, and, you know, their kind of dropout rate, um, you know, from universities. So um, all of these things are, you know, in our um, you know, in our minds as we're, you know, supporting our customers, you know, right now and in and in the future, um, but also in our, um, you know, kind of development plans. Um, and I think that hands over quite nicely to David, who is going to talk about some of the, um, yeah, some of the sort of practical things that they've been doing at the University of Southampton using VBOX. Thanks, Joe. Um, so I think my microphone's working. Put something in the chat if not. Um, so if we go back to March, I'm sure you all remember that feeling, that sinking feeling perhaps that we had. And uh, this, I'm just putting this on the screen here just to show uh, this was in the middle of March. Um, we actually shut our teaching down. So Joe was talking about their usage falling off. Well, part of the reason that Southampton was we actually finished our term a week early, sent the students packing while we then spent a bit of time working out what we were going to do. So my first experience of actually doing any of this stuff online was a staff development session that had been scheduled for this time and uh, I decided on the day on the morning that I wasn't going to travel to Southampton it was just when everything was kicking off with Covid I was going to run the session online in Teams just drop myself right in it and drop my audience in it and just see how it goes. Um, now in the session I was running which is about flip learning and active learning I always use VVox so this was the acid test for me um, you know, will this work if I'm doing this online? Well, we had a lot of staff present and we used some word cloud questions from VVox. We got responses. It meant that I wasn't actually talking into a void, which was what I was worried about. People were actually listening and engaging. And, and that just that experience of getting that feedback from people that were participating actually gave me the confidence that this stuff was going to work and that I didn't need to worry quite so much about my teaching that was coming up. Um, so that was a good starter for us um, and nice to actually work with staff and also give them the confidence that this could work um, and hopefully get a few more of them using it in their online teaching. So over the Easter period, we were then planning for what we were going to do for the rest of, of the, the semester, the final four weeks of teaching we hadn't actually completed. And actually, we decided to put for my foundation year course, which I'm showing here, we put lots of the teaching in asynchronous formats, so recorded lectures problem sets that students would work through but with talking mark schemes that are videos that go through the answers um, so they could do all this asynchronously. We also had some office hours sessions where students could drop in and ask questions about the asynchronous content um, but on the right hand side actually the key thing that I was focusing on was this synchronous online workshop session at the end of the week where we would bring everything together and I was imagining that we had a, a bunch of students in front of us who we knew well already and they knew us really well so i was expecting quite a lot of engagement quite a lot of participation on their part but as many people experienced the students were very worried about putting their cameras and microphones on they preferred to kind of hide in the shadows and and that did make things quite difficult you it, joe was talking about mental health for students actually i think the mental health of staff can be affected if you're just talking to a blank screen all day long so actually that was where VVox came in really handy because even though the students weren't prepared to put their cameras on and talk to me, they were prepared to respond. And actually this really helped to build that dialogue that's really important in any learning community. So just some examples here. I know they're quite small on the screen there, but every week when I ran one of these sessions, I asked the students how they'd been getting on with the work they'd been doing. And what it's showing you is that the, the, the responses at the bottom end of that scale, top left there, are the ones that indicate the students had done the work. So that was reassuring as a lecturer. 
Um, for the questions where you can see the green and red bars, they're conceptual questions where the green bars show correct responses and the red ones show incorrect responses. So if we were worried about our students actually learning online, actually there was some reassurance there that if they're getting some of the answers right, that probably indicates they're learning something from that online teaching. So that was a nice thing. But where you see a red bar, it, that's a misconception that you can then address and, and give some feedback to the students. So again, this was supporting that dialogue and making sure there was the two-way conversation that you need in any kind of teaching experience. And I tried a few other things at the, on the right, top right there, you see an example of a question which is a numerical question in VVOX that I'd never tried before. Um, and this prompted me to give it a go. Um, just the ones at the bottom right and in the middle at the bottom there, you can see a couple of examples of questions that normally I would ask in person just verbally at the end of a session. So have you read your feedback from that presentation yet? And you anecdotally get the response that most of them have. Well, actually doing it this way, I was able to see that three quarters of them actually had. Um, and I was able to say, oh, that's great. So the rest of you that haven't, make sure that you go away and do that. Um, and you can see there, the bottom right, that was just asking them about an assignment that I'd set. So just th those kinds of conversations that you'd always just have at the end of a session, uh, this actually just gave us the opportunity to, to have that conversation with them. Now, my screen is frozen. I don't know if you can hear me. So you can still hear you and... fine. I can, I can you, can right. you right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, good. So something's gone wrong with my screen, but I'm actually in here on two devices. So I'm going to try to control the slides from the other one. Okay, let right. us know. If not, I can happily advance the slides for you. We're currently seeing the CAGP festival slide. Yes, brilliant. So I, I've got that. I can see it on my other screen. Thanks, Marin. Um, so yes, so basically what I was just finishing off there was saying that that kept that dialogue going with our students and then we were able to send them packing over the summer while we then thought about what we're going to do for next year. So one of our big events that we run is the CHEP Festival of Learning and Teaching, CHEP being the Centre for Higher Education Practice. I worked with some students to create a session where they actually led the session and they were polling staff using VVOX. So it's quite, quite a different way of establishing that community between staff and students. And that was re a really popular session, one of the highlights of the festival. Um, and you can see there that that was the staff there. We were asking the staff how they felt. And you can see overwhelmingly, actually, people were more on the nervous and anxious side of the spectrum. And this gave the students a chance to say, well, actually, look, we, you know, we're in this together. Um, and, you know, these are reasons why perhaps you shouldn't be anxious. Try to be more positive. And it's quite good to hear that coming from students rather than it being the staff saying that to the students. So that was quite nice. Um, so there you go. I think I've got control back. That seems OK. Um, so thinking about prep for the next academic year. So we spoke to our students last year. As I said, one of the issues we had was that they weren't putting their cameras on. They weren't discussing things with us. We wanted to get that dialogue working properly. And the suggestions from the students here, when we asked them, it was all about having small group activities. Um, so that got us thinking about breakout groups, which has been something we've been doing a lot of work with over the last semester. And I've been trying to use VVOX to enhance the engagement and participation and learning in those. And I'll, I'll talk about some examples. Um, it was really important to do this right from the beginning of the year. We had a new cohort of students now, people we hadn't met before. And during our induction session, we actually put them into breakout groups to discuss which questions they wanted to ask us. So rather than us bombarding them with information in induction, which we normally do, the idea was that, that they would actually generate the questions that we would address. And we anticipated that the questions they would ask would probably be the same kinds of things that we would normally be communicating to them. But by, by getting them to ask the question, it was giving them ownership over that. And they might actually listen a bit better than they would if we just hit them with all the information at once. Um, and this was a nice feature. So they discussed in the groups which questions they wanted to ask. You can see some of them listed there on the right. And we got them to upvote the ones that they were most interested in. And then we were able to focus the rest of that session on those specific questions. And, and that worked really well. And that'll be something we'll probably carry on in the future, even though we, we did it just for this sort of unique year. Hopefully it's unique. Um, but going forward, we can pick some of this technology up and use it in our sort of more normal teaching, if that's a way to phrase it. Another thing I've talked about quite a lot previously is using this peer instruction approach, uh, which was developed by Eric Mazur at Harvard. Um, so an example that's shown here, you, you poll a question to the students. As shown on the left, that's the initial response. 
If I was doing this in a live session, they would then talk to the people around them. I advise them to try to find somebody who gave a different answer to them so they can thrash out the theory and, and, and hopefully settle on a joint understanding of what the correct answer is. Um, and then you poll the answer, poll the question again, and you get the response as seen on the right, the, the follow up where they've drifted towards the correct answer, which is air in this case. So what we did with uh, our breakout groups was to do the same thing. We would poll questions beforehand and then put them into breakout groups to discuss their responses and then bring them back to the main session and poll again. You can do exactly the same thing you would normally do. But anyone that's used breakout groups will appreciate you tend to lose a bit of time at the beginning and the end. And if you were doing that for lots of peer instruction questions, your half your session would be wasted. So I've tended to combine the questions together. I'll just finish off with some examples. So um, here you can see three chemistry questions that we polled the students with um, consecutively. I didn't share the responses with them at that time. This was just to prime them for then going into the breakout room. Um, and when they were in the breakout room, they had access to a shared PowerPoint slide. You can see just there a bit small on the screen, I know bottom right. And there they had the three questions and they could discuss those in their groups. And you'll see the little blue bits of text. They, they could edit that and add their explanations, having had that discussion with each other. And then they came back to the main room and we polled the questions again and then talked through the answers. Now, again, this will be very small on the screen. You won't really be able to see it. But on the left, they're the results from before. So actually, they weren't the best peer instruction questions as, as a majority of students were getting them right to start with. So about 60 uh, five percent getting the first one right the uh, first time around about 90 percent getting the second one and probably somewhere around 60 percent for the third one but if you look on the right after they'd been in the breakout rooms had those discussions they came back we polled the questions again and virtually 100 percent of students were getting them right and we asked them about what why was that what did you gain from the breakout room there and they said that the conversations help them to develop their confidence. They felt much more confident about the answers. So even if they'd got it right the first time, a lot of them were still not 100% sure that they were on the right track. But after those conversations with their peers, they felt much more confident and came back and, as you can see, responded really positively with overwhelmingly correct answers. So we found that, that combining VVOX with the breakout room approach has allowed us to build the community of learners that we like to have in our face-to-face -face sessions. Obviously, not everybody engages as much as you would like, but actually, if you look around the room in person, they're not always engaging as much as you would like in that environment. So <clears throat> I've, I'm actually a big fan of all of this stuff, and I, I hope we're going to carry on doing some more of it in the future. Um, and I'd like to thank Joe and the VVOX team for the, the evolution of the software over time as it, it's getting more and more powerful. So just a few examples there to share. But thanks very much for listening. Back to you, Joe. Do you want to round things up? Uh... Yeah, sure. I was I was actually just going to hand over to uh, hand over to Robert. Sure. Hey, that's fine. I'm quite happy with that. Thank you. That yeah, brilliant. We really, really, really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, especially the uh, great great bit about uh, using uh, Mazur's peer instruction in uh, in breakout rooms. Um, that, yeah, terrific idea. Um, I put a link in the chat if anyone's interested. He did a great um, keynote at Altsy in in uh, 2012. Um, it was uh, still great watching, really good. Uh, but yeah, that's a ter terrific use of, uh, of VVox and breakout rooms, and you know, great great pedagogy, uh, great technology. Yeah, I, I was um, yeah. I, as, of course, if anyone's got any questions, please please do uh, pop them in the chat. Um, I was I was just wondering. I mean, I guess it was a bit of an obvious question, really. I was just wondering if you did any um, sort of uh, correlations with the um, some of those earlier questions where it was where you were sort of fairly sure it was the students who hadn't watched the um, the lectures were the ones that were, were tending towards the uh, the incorrect answers. That's a really good suggestion. Um, so we, we tend to run the polls anonymously. Uh, we have thought about getting them to sign in and, and then we could potentially use the data in that way. Um, so yeah, I mean, that would be, uh, it seems like a, one of those obvious things um, to, to suggest, but actually without having the data, you can't make assumptions, right? So, you yeah, know, that's a really good idea. Yeah, I mean, it would be, I guess it's one of those things that would be nice, but then, you know, you've then got all those other problems where, Perhaps the students are going to be much more reluctant to take part if it's not if they're going to be, uh, you know, your, their responses are known. 
I think that idea of this sort of anonymous poll, it, it really means that it really, look, it's a genuine learning experience and it really doesn't matter whether you get the question right or wrong. Um, at that point, no one's going to know about it. No, but having said that, uh, sometimes students have said to me, actually, it'd be quite nice if you could send us some feedback. So potentially if we logged all of their responses in a spreadsheet, we could auto generate some feedback that we'd send them by mail merge. We've, we've done that with some things in the past. So some students have said they'd be quite happy for it not to be anonymous, but we know that there are others that really don't want it to change. So it's a difficult one. I think I think it is. I think I think it's very tricky. I mean, I've I've spoken to academics before, and their uh, engagement has has soared when uh, responses were able to be anonymous, uh, and people were much cagier before. So, it's perhaps you know a worthwhile trade off. You know, okay, you can't quite quite go into that detail with the data, but it's you know, it, it, it makes for better engagement, which of course is you know the the, the most important thing. Absolutely. But yeah, that, that yeah, it's terrific. Th thank you ever so much for that. That was uh, that was great. And you know, uh, so yeah, th thank you, thank you, Michael, uh, for your first presentation, and and Joe and David, been a really really interesting session. Um,